So, hello everyone. Thank you for attending our call, our our talk. <laughs> um, my name is Stefan Bunciak. Um, I'm a manager of quality engineering and um, in middleware department. Along with me, there's uh, Mirek Karas, um, senior quality engineer, also in the middleware department, and we'll talk a little bit about testing IoT applications. Um, we'll walk through some of the challenges we faced during our research project and. Uh, um, I'll do some of the more boring stuff, let's say, uh, more general, general uh, concepts and stuff, um, and then Mirek will talk about our uh, our proud, our open source project. Um, but yeah, that will come later on. So uh, let's get started. Um, when we talk about Internet of Things, we generally uh, think of something like this: um, a lot of uh, sensors, a bunch of actuators connected via gateway, um, sending sending data via that gateway to some data centers for processing and anal uh, analytics, uh, decision making, and stuff like that. But um, <clears throat> During our, let's say, research and, and our work, um, we found out that the things are a little bit more complicated than this, um, and we sort of uh, discovered a lot more of the IoT, let's say, architectures and fine-grade topologies of, of IoT applications and stuff like that. So, yeah, we'll, you will see that uh, in the in the following slides. Um, but even with this, uh, let's say a little bit simplified uh, simplified uh, topology of IoT application or IoT system, you can, uh, you can already see that um, there can be a lot of, a lot of challenges when you want to comprehensively test such, such distributed system, right? Um, first of all, um, there's the environment itself, right? There's a, there's a lot of network topologies and a lot of uh, network protocols uh, in play. There's, um, you need to take into account that the network is sometimes uh, limited in its bandwidth and, and stuff like that. It's not like perfect conditions in your, in your data center. Um, there is a lot of different technology stacks, uh, different devices and, and stuff like that. Um, then there is also the aspect of performance, right? Um, when you have a let's say hundreds or thousands of sensors uh, generating data. Um, it's a huge load for the, for the IoT system to actually process and, and uh, work with it. So that's one important aspect uh, or one important challenge uh, that you need to take into account. Um, then there's the thing of the integration itself, right? You have a big distributed system. Um, sometimes very, very resource demanding to deploy or, or to actually uh, sometimes put together, right? You have, the, you have the sensors, you have the actuators of various types, you have the gateways, you have the uh, business logic in there, you have the analytics parts, and you need to basically spin it up uh, everything at once in order to comprehensively test it. So it's not just you know, testing the small parts, but you need to take into account the whole picture uh, so that the IoT system works as, uh, as design as you want um, and uh, one of the last things uh, that we observed is that there's a huge um, let's say uh, almost let's say unlimited even and it's kind uh, of the of the data and uh, the data inputs that the system needs to process and, and work with right so um, coming from the coming from the sensor so um, ideally you would uh, somehow create only a uh, only a subset of these data to to, to put into the to put into the uh, IoT application for testing so that it traverses all the all the important aspects of the applications but uh, not uh, not uh, like um, test every single possible input because that would of course uh, create a huge amount of test runs and and uh, test, ex test executions required for um, comprehensive testing so um, with these challenges in mind, um, we teamed up with uh, 
our university partners from Czech University, Czech Technical University in Prague. Um, we put some thought into it and, and put together a project proposal um, titled Quality Assurance System for Internet of Things um, and submitted to uh, Czech Agency of Technology for for support. Um, our project got accepted um, and the work basically kicked off in 2017. Um, and um, the Let's see. It consists of two two important aspects of it: um, methodological part and and the technical part. Um, as you as you can imagine, um, the technical technical part is handled mostly by the Red Hat engineers, and the methodology part is uh, taken care of by the by the university people. So. Um, our journey began um, at, the, at the very um, at the very beginning of the project. We basically had to, had to define what the what the IoT system or IoT application basically is. How does it look like? What are the what are the important topologies we need to have in mind? What are the protocols? What are the deployments used? What are the technology stacks that that's, uh, that are being used uh, in the in the industry? Um, um, how does it all work together? You know how to even um, how to even test such such a distributed and, and heterogeneous environments. Um, so there were there were a lot of a lot of uh, questions in the in the beginning. Let's say, um, yeah, one of them being also how to how to effectively effectively automate such testing, right? Because uh, at the end, uh, if you are developing a, a distributed IoT system, you you want it to be automated and and and. Uh, Run all the tests in, uh, in ideally in a, some sort of continuous integration uh, environment, right? You don't want to run the tests in a manual fashion. So there was a lot of a lot of questions uh, we had to, we had to answer before some some real work could, could even begin. So we basically started with the with the question of how the typical IoT system or IoT application look like. Uh, what are the uh, topologies? Um, and we basically came up came up with five of those, um, very different ones. Um, and um, Mirek will walk you walk you through all of them uh, in a little bit more detail. So Mirek, over yeah. to you. So uh, as Stefan said, it started as a question: What is the IoT application? So we went to the papers, right? We start digging, digging, and after hundreds of hours and uh, searching from or reading hundreds of papers, we found out that we can categorize the vast majority of the architectures into five different categories. So first one, and that's the most common one, as you know it, is the gateway-centric uh, application or deployment. That's the deployment you probably knew, know from your house in a way that you have some gateway deployed and then all the... Okay, I will move it a bit down. Is it better now? Can you hear me still? All right. <clears throat> so, there's an there's a application you probably know the best because that's the kind of application you can have in your house. <clears throat> You do have some single gateway where all the amenities, all the things that you have in your house are connected to, which collects the data, and then you somehow interact with the gateway. In a way like, okay, when I want to open my window, I will just click in my web application at home and do a uh, window will open, something like that. So pretty simple application, pretty easy to test even. But then there are different, like the distributed mesh. That's a, that's a kind of application that is really similar to the microservice architecture, as you know it now. So a lot of different things that are sending data all over the place and communicating among themselves, like one actuator knows that it has to listen to different sensor and when message emerges, it will react somehow. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. Then there is the connected Internet of Things. 
this is something um, more related to the industry way how the internet things uh, works there like if you are in some I believe the correct uh, abbreviation is IIoT, industrial IoT, um, is handled. So you have uh, different parts of your, I don't know, factory has a different separated uh, networks that are mostly single purpose and then they communicate via some gateway together and they uh, interact together. And then there is the last part and that's a collaborative IoT application. This is the, uh, the architecture, this is the architecture that is used mostly in the big, uh, larger scale deployments like uh, uh, like uh, smart cities, etc. So you do have a separate part, separate gateways uh, that are somehow interconnected. Let's say one gateway is collecting data from, I don't know, the traffic control stuff. Another gateway is uh, getting from, I don't know, uh, the ICE part, like from the um, from the police, etc., and then they communicate somehow on a larger level, like between the gateways. And there is some user who tries to collect all the data together and combine them. Then, next slide, please. Then there is the last architecture, and that would be the wireless sensor network, which is somehow out of the scope, but also in the scope, because this is more related to the technology than to the architecture itself, because you can see the uh, wireless sensor as some part of just one network, and or maybe as a, even as a single device. If you would, if you would look at it, it's a single device that provides you data from the whole network, but it has to be in mind as well for the proper design. So yeah, that is all. Okay. So. Um with these, let's say, first questions answered, like what, what, the, what the IoT application or IoT architectures look like, um, we wanted to address the challenges outlined in the previous slides. Um, so the first, the first and most important is the heter heterogeneous environment. So we we knew that we would need something that would um, simulate the networks, simulate the various kinds of networks, various topologies. Uh, that we would also need something that would um, emulate the devices, the actuators and, uh, and simulators, and, uh, and at the same time, it would uh, support um, the emulated devices to be configured in a way that we, we want it to, to behave like, right? So, so we can actually uh, tell them, hey, you are going to be a temperature sensor and you will behave like, like a normal day, normal day in, in a Boston, let's say. But um, at some point, we need to be able to tell him, like, hey, um, uh, I don't know, an earthquake uh, arises, so <laughs> it, it uh, needs to start uh, behaving uh, a bit differently for a short period of time. So um, with, with these features in mind, um, we need it. We need it. Uh, we need it to start implementing uh, uh, features like this. Then uh, there is the matter of performance. Um, again, the ideal thing would be to take an existing tool, right, and and integrate with it. Um, so we do not reinvent the wheel. Uh, so we picked up the Perfcake tool uh, because it's developed developed by our colleagues at, at the Red Hat uh, in Brno. So uh, that was our obvious choice. Um, then there is the matter of integration and uh, end to end scenarios, let's say. Um, again, we wanted to take um, a de facto standard, uh, and in this case, it was the JUnit framework. Um, so again, we do not reinvent, reinvent the wheel, only build uh, build a pond that's already in, uh, in the world out there. Um, and the uh, last challenge we outlined was the uh, huge amount of uh, data variants and configurations of the system. Um, that's something that uh, our university partners has uh, experience with. So we basically uh, built uh, upon their knowledge 
knowledge upon their experience and, and expertise and um, uh, our colleagues um, came up with a tool named Oxygen um, and uh, the, let's say the research research guys at the university put a, put a lot of lot of uh, thoughts and, and a lot of lot of expertise in implementing and math, mathematical knowledge and, and stuff like that, um, theory of testing and stuff like that into, into uh, implementation of, of this tool. Um, it's a it's a model based tool for um, generating. Uh, uh, Test cases in an automated fashion, where you basically, where you basically uh, put into the tool the entities, the relations between entities and the operations. Um, model it via UML activity diagram it will uh, automatically generate the test cases uh, that would uh, test the system comprehensively but in a most efficient way that you don't need to don't need to uh, work with all the possible inputs but only with a subset of it um, in case you are more interested in it um, feel free to grab the bits and and contact the contact the university people um, because it's mostly being worked on on the uh, on it by the by the university university researchers and professors um, not really our our domain um, what is our domain though is the automated testing framework um, via this one uh, we want to address all the remaining challenges in in IoT testing um, first of all uh, we had to put in place some of the some of let's say uh, hard stop requirements first of all of course it had to be open source right uh, the second one is that we wanted to build as I mentioned on a on a de facto standard technologies that in our case was the J unit 5 um, then the most important features, let's say, which were the simulators and generators, uh, network simulations and, and data generators, uh, so that we can automate network deployment, automate the data generation to properly test the IoT application. Um, and the last one it was that it had to be CI compliant so that we can hook it up to a CI tool like Jenkins or, or Travis. Travis. So yeah, with these additional requirements in mind, um, we went on and uh, wanted to design the system. Um, as you can see, we also put a lot of thought into it. Uh, so it ended up like, like this one. <laughs> um, not, uh, not something you would call a simple diagram, but um, as you will see later on, um, fortunately, it turned out to be a, a bit more simple. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, this was the first first design we came up with and, and uh, delivered to the Czech Agency of Technology <laughs> as part of our final report in the first year. So, yeah. I just uh, might, might add, if you yeah. go back one slide, that the colors are there for a reason because for every single component you can see there there was a different diagram that, de that defined the interactions more comprehensively and so this was basically a high level diagram really high level <laughs> so yeah uh, nevertheless um, even with this system uh, design in place, um, we were very brave and uh, went to the implementation phase um, and basically set up an open source project called Patriot. And um, Mirek will talk you, to, uh, walk you through some of the some of the details of our proud open source project. Okay, so about the Patriot. So as we said, we started with the architecture, with some architecture, and we have the design you saw on the slide before. So the goal of the Patriot is to give you some tool, some framework that will allow you to build up a testing solution that will enable you to simulate somehow the network or the network topology that is going to be used by your application, emulate the behavior of the uh, 
different kinds of data providers like are the sensors or to emulate the behavior of actuators that you are going to have um, deployed in the real application. The reason why we are simulating this is a simple, to have this uh, kind of test bed ready uh, that's really uh, expensive and the tests are hardly um, repeatable etc because basically you will end up with some technological some uh, physical demonstration where you will have to have a human who will look over it write down the results of the test cases and then you can measure them so that's why we and we started with the uh, simulations etc of course it has some disadvantages like you can't test the itself but you can test its integrations if you have its mathematical properties um, yeah so we ended up with five cornerstones the component for network simulation component for um, and the data emulation or data generation test runner for the integration testing which will allow you to do the integration testing itself in a most simple way so, some extensions for reporting and metrics because in these scenarios uh, the basic ones like only plan x unit etc are not sufficient for you because you are dealing with distributed environment um, and components for integration with some performance tool because we need to test that as well so as you can see we pretty narrow it down in a way how to design it so we ended up with three basic components of course that's a work in progress right so in uh, in some next release it will grow but right now we ended up only with three components and we are happy enough but all the interactions that were defined are there, somehow uh, hidden, right? So we do have the free basic stuff. Of course, there will be the performance in next release that will be somehow connected to it, etc. And also the simulator part will probably divide also to more providers than there are now. Next slide, please. So the framework base, the framework base. So we started with JUnit 5. Why JUnit 5? Well, because for the testing, uh, you don't want to use some low-level language in general. Because if you if we would start with something like C, and we, we would try to build a um, a comprehensive system for testing, then you would end up with framework that will test your application but after you have written something like thousands of lines of code to write single testing methods right so and why why, why Java and JUnit 5 because JUnit 5 is a pretty new technology uh, which is highly customizable uh, and extensible and we know it the best right so that was the second reason so the base defines the APIs for interactions, so it defines the API for the network simulation um, in case you would need to extend it for your specific uh, model or something like that. It, it extends the basic properties of JUnit because JUnit itself is still unit testing framework. So there are stuff like random random orders, etc. But even the JUnit uh, developers are extending it, so you can do some stuff with it, and we are doing some stuff with it as well. So we ex we extended the properties to add some things like skipping the test and execution when another test failed. For instance, <coughs> you don't want to test your function. Uh, for uh, division if it failed on a single scenario, right? But you have to uh, think of it in a more complex way, in a bigger system. So that's why we added this. Uh, or breakpoints, like, okay, I, I started this test, but if this test failed, we don't need to continue. 
So that, that kind of thing. Then uh, there is a single management place called Patriot Hub, which contains all the things created by the framework to allow you to manage it. So let's say you want to, uh, in between the tests, you want to set up some environment change. Like, OK, right now, part or segment of network will fail. It will be disconnected. You can do it via that. Connect to it, set, you are disconnected, and it will happen. And then you can resume your testing and test it, what is going to happen in your environment. Um, and it is the start point of the framework to operate. So other parts of the framework will be basically and more probably useless to you without this. Next slide, please. OK, so the network simulation. I would say this is the biggest part of the Patriot framework itself. Um, so it provides you tooling to emulate and virtual uh, and deploy your application uh, to define the topology of your network application, like uh, spawning up several networks and several network segments, and then deploying specific applications or a specific part of application into it. Um, it does have the full control over the network, so at any point of the test run or in a before phase, after phase, anywhere you can say something like, okay, right now you are changing your, your IP address, or you are going to uh, behave uh, maliciously somehow. Like, okay, right now we are going to send only 50% of packets, and stuff like that. You can, this is the thing that will allow you um, right now, it's completely, uh, it, it's using only Docker. Why Docker? Because we, need to, we needed to have some easy to use um, environment for proof of concept and the place how to even define the API. So what do we really need to have in common to get to work in state? But currently we are starting, we are working on another, well, I will get to it later, but we are working on other uh, runtimes as well. Um, okay, next slide please. So this is, uh, this is somehow a uh, capture of how the network simulation operates. So the test runner itself, or test runner, all the automation uh, around test runner can create a simulated environment in a way that it will create several networks. In a Docker, it's pretty simple. That's another reason why we use that. And then it can deploy the applications. In this case, look at this uh, square or rectangle. I didn't uh, put some label to it as a single container. How we operate is to every single container that is running in the simulated environment, we add a simple thin layer of abstraction to it. That's our part, that's our API, which allows us to connect to it and somehow modify its behavior. We can do it either via setting up the network inter the virtual network interface itself or via the IP tables, which are there present as well. And then there is a second part, which is router. The router itself, you can imagine it as a uh, normal L3 router. So it's a, it's a container that is connected to both networks and has the routing table that allows to forward the packets from one to another. Via this, uh, via this uh, control interfaces, you can then set Things like, okay, I am completely disconnecting my application from the internet. What is going to happen? I am going to uh, disconnect sin single application. Or I, you can tell to your router, okay, you are not routing this application anymore. And in case you would test something like, um, I don't know, uh, uh, sending uh, of the information via a different route. So that's it, how the network simulation operates. And then there is a data simulator. So for the data simulator, our initial thought was to create some um, simple tool that would behave like a Lego, if you know it. I'm not sure if I can say Lego, if, if it's not trademarked, but please don't tell on me. 
Um, so uh, we thought, or our thought was to create something that would uh, easily enable you to build your solution as you want it. The base of uh, the network simulation is some mathematical property of your device. For instance, when you would be simulating a thermometer, there are mathematical functions that defines how the temperature behaves during the day. Our uh, the, our data simulator then incorporates mathematical library that will allow you to, uh, in combination with uh, with some random data generator, uh, combine it with your mathematical property and, for instance, by the distribution function, define what data will be sent out. So this is the first place how to get the render, uh, how to get the data that or seed for the data that will modify the behavior of the generator. Then there is a second part uh, which, which uh, describes, where you can describe how the data, which are typically some number, some double, or something like that, are transformed into some meaningful uh, number. Like, for instance, if you would go with a a thermometer, your mathematical function will only define the, um, uh, the increments or decrements of the value itself, but it will not uh, set the zero. So then you have one single transformation. In the, in the input is some double. I want to transform it into the real, um, the real temperature, so then I have to apply some modification to it. And then there is the last part, how to, how to uh, transform these data into something that is transferable over the internet. So wrapping up whole solution into, let's say, MQTT message and send it out, or into a REST call, or into a co-op call, something like that. Next, oh, next slide, please. Okay, so those were, were the three cornerstones of the application. What's next for the 2.0 release of the Patriot? So as I said, this, uh, what we have done right now is basically uh, more of a POC than a production ready solution. Um, we are aiming the, our 2.0 by the end of this month and we should uh, provide or we will provide some better in, uh, parts of framework for integration testing. Uh, what we have right now in mind is uh, more support for audit execution uh, in a way that you could describe the dependencies between the test classes and test cases as a tree. For instance, you, uh, for instance one of the things we are going to implement is um, label or annotation after test, or after, not after test, after, uh, that will allow you to say to a test class that it should be or it has to be executed after a different test class is done. <laughs> and things like that. Um, Second, next thing, provide better integration of the framework parts. Uh, framework parts. Right now, it works together, but we don't have uh, any support for uh, simple usage. So yeah, you can use the network simulator and the JUnit extensions and the data generator, but right now it doesn't basically know about they basically doesn't know about themselves. We want to add some layer of abstraction over it in order to make it uh, work more together. Um, next thing, uh, since the reporting and monitoring is a really um, highlighted feature that is expected from us by other uh, by potential end users, uh, we are going to add uh, some pre-configured um, Kibana that will be connected to the Elasticsearch for the collected metrics, so you can see the 
matrix of the test execution itself. And the last thing, first cooperation between uh, between the rest of framework and Perfcake is expected for the 2.0. Okay? And more plans, like comprehensive demo, which we do not have, so you won't see it in action, unfortunately. Uh, we also want to extend the network simulation itself, first of all, to span over more Docker hosts. Right now we are able to operate only over one Docker host. We will want to make it more like a cluster for testing. Also we want to add some things like uh, cooperation with uh, hypervisors, for instance KVM, in order to start uh, and to manage virtual machines, either as a single segment of a network or only as a one application. And we want to introduce open, open tracing into the framework in order to provide the data from the run itself. So um, whenever, for instance, the application itself is aware of open tracing or system on test is aware of open tracing, we could add our data to it and then the debugging would be even more simple. And the last thing is the description of SUT in YAML file. So a way how we could describe what is going to be deployed and how with YAML, because YAML is cool, right? <laughs> so, yeah, we do have the definition of data generators already. We are right now working on the definition of the simulated environment, but uh, we want to wait with the definition of the simulated environment to the another parts of the of the framework like the connection to different providers etc and that's probably all from my side yeah yeah, that was the plans of Patriot uh, project itself, but um, it plays a role in a, let's say, a bigger project uh, that started in July 2017 and should finish in uh, the end, by the end of the 2020. Um, we are currently in the in the phase when we have a POC ready, um, as Mirek mentioned, um, and still still in the in the process of uh, completing the. Uh, required features let's say um, we should be completed by the end of this year um, and we are already in discussions with potential users in, in Czech Republic uh, both from the methodology perspective and the uh, Patriot framework uh, itself so that's something um, that awaits us uh, next year uh, this pilot testing or Pilot, pilot usage uh, in, in a customer and real environments um, and of course bug fixing and stuff like that and we will evaluate the project itself and in the in the 2020 hopefully it will be a successful one so that's that's uh, from the project timeline um, in case you have any questions feel free to feel free to ask um, or you can uh, reach out to us later uh, either via email or or, or visit our web page or fork our GitHub repo and um, yeah, pull requests are very welcome. Yeah. So in case uh, you have, have uh, interest in, in uh, testing IoT applications. So yeah, thank you very much for your attention. And if there are any questions, you can ask them now. Sorry, I just, what is SUV? System under test. There you go. Oh,